let me talk about zero trust uh, in the quickest I possibly can. So what is zero trust? Well, trust is a human emotion that we've injected into digital systems for absolutely no reason. So it turns out that trust in digital systems is a vulnerability. And it's a very dangerous vulnerability. In fact, it's the most dangerous vulnerability in the world because it's the only vuln that's also an exploit at the same time. You don't need to create new malware for trust. All you need to do is be on the network. And the bad actors can always get on the network. So the only value you get from trust in your organization uh, is that the malicious actors have a cool place to hang out. That's, all, that's the only thing it provides for you. So there's a lot of myths about zero trust. The first one is zero trust means making a system trusted. How much trust should there be in a zero trust system? I tried to make it as explicit as, as I could. Zero. We're trying to get rid of trust, not make system trusted. Trust is a joke. You can read the uh, trusted computing fact from Ross Anderson. He will tell you that. Zero trust is also not about identity. It consumes identity, but it isn't equal to identity. I can prove that with two words. Snowden, Manning, they were trusted users. They had all the right identity and MFA, but nobody looked at their packets post-authentication. And then there are zero trust products. That is not true. There are products that work well in zero trust environments, but zero trust is a strategy designed to stop data breaches and make other cybersecurity attacks unsuccessful. It's a strategy that uses products. And then zero trust is complicated, not true. There are nine things you need to know to understand and do zero trust. They look like this. The four design concepts. First, focus on the business drivers. What is your business trying to achieve? Second, design the system from the inside out. Start with the data or assets you're trying to protect. If you don't know what you're protecting, it will never work, will it? Third, determine who or what should have access to any particular resource. Need to know, least privilege, but enforce it. We've talked about least privilege forever, but we never enforced it. And then finally, you inspect and log all traffic because that's where all the bad stuff happens, in the traffic. And if we do that, we can create a layer seven policy. Ultimately, zero trust is a layer seven policy statement. Now, there is a five-step methodology that will guide your journey. The first thing you need to do is define your protect surface. I can take the attack surface and shrink it down orders of magnitude to something very small and easily known called a protect surface. What do you put in a protect surface? You put in a DAS element. It stands for data, applications, assets, or resources. Uh, so you want to protect the stuff that matters. And then you're going to see how it works as a system, map the transaction flows, and that will determine the technology that you need to protect it. So you cannot understand how to protect something until you need to know what to protect. The fourth step is to create policy. The fifth step is to monitor and maintain so that you can take all the telemetry and send it into a feedback loop and make the system stronger and stronger over time. Zero trust is an anti-fragile system. If you're familiar with anti-fragility, read the book by uh, Taleb. We can make uh, this particular system stronger and stronger over time. So you're going to break the big problem of cybersecurity in, down into multiple small problems called protect surfaces. And we can do that for OT environments all the time. And I've done it a lot. So uh, this is the quick introduction to zero trust.